late afternoon in southern Spain. I have to say that every area on the patio is my favorite grow area. However, when it comes to the south, there are some goodies here that we very rarely get to see. So they are in the viewfinder today. It's going to be an update, mid-season update, so to speak. And I am so glad that you're here. Thank you so, so much for clicking on this video. Now, as you can see, cousin it to the left over there, He's still in full sun, as is Kimmy. The rest is in the shade, but that is also thanks to the umbrella. The umbrella isn't there as much to serve my Renantanda sunrise over there, or my Mimecophila tibicines, or even the sweet sugar, which we'll have a closer look at just now. It is more there to shade the Angrecoids. I think, however, that the angle of the sun is now low enough that I can remove the umbrella. At least visually, it will provide a little bit more light for what I want to show you, and also for the Angrecoids. Now we can somewhat see them in their full glory if the Schweinfortiana would just move. The Schweinfortiana is on the chair when it gets really, really hot, when there's not enough breeze, because I only have 30% humidity during these warm days. As you can see, there is limited breeze today, so I protect the Schweinfortianum, even though it can handle some very, very bright and direct sun conditions, but it's always a thing here with the lack of humidity. I try to be mindful of that. Another candidate, as we scooch in a little bit closer, that is always <laughs> on this chair when the sun starts to hit it where it normally lives, is my Jomelia arborescence currently throwing out three buds, but I can see two more spikes on the way, so I protect that as well from the harsh direct sun. At the end of the video, once we've had a quick overview of everything else that is lined up here, Evander Cerula, that one there, we're gonna look at the Epidendrum Stamfordianum, and we're going to deal with the cesspool jacuzzi that's gone a little bit green over there with my van der grasshopper that is also in need of an update so from left to right you just saw everybody get a drink that has a saucer that includes maxillaria variabilis who is currently in the late afternoon sun even though it is very hot this orchid can handle it and from when i poured in the water the dish is already half empty again i fill that dish every day about four times same with the kimberlianum on the right full sun it's okay because during the majority of the day she is in shade she is growing exponentially and her dish is already half empty i can fill it again yeah the moss is taking up a lot of that moisture as well but still there are roots in the pot. I do not want them to dry out. So before it's time to tuck them all away again for the night, those dishes will be filled one more time. I'm enjoying the fact that Kimmy is still growing beautiful root tips and she's growing up into the hedge, so to speak. That's okay, I'm using the hedge as a humidity buffer and until she doesn't get moved for her winter stints, she gets to grow where she is as she is. I have attached a wire to the hedge, as you can see, just to keep the growth upright and not have them snap on me when it gets really windy. I said left to right, and I'm already jumping ahead. My Mimicophila thompsoniana over there on the left is growing two new growths. Each lead has a single growth coming up, and I am really pushing the fertilizer into that one this time. I'm hoping to re-establish the size of the bulbs that I managed to grow in 2020. And since then, have not grown. So she's getting a lot of fertilizer at the moment. And when I say a lot, I'm talking 500 parts per million every time her reservoir goes dry. We rarely see Renantanda Sunrise because Renantanda Sunrise, there's really nothing much to talk about except that now she is starting on some roots, which is awesome. They will stop growing eventually, unfortunately. She has never bloomed for me. My conditions are not to her liking at all, but she's trying, she's still alive, she copes, but we're not gonna see anything glamorous out of her anytime soon. But I like the fact that one of the little fans that she started to grow three years ago is now growing its own little roots as well. My Mimicophila tibicinis, well, it's time to see a new growth or two coming out of that one, but it's still maybe early days for it. Only once it's a little bit more advanced will I be actually able to see it because of its growth habit being so compact and tight to the base of where the media is. My Oncidesa Sweet Sugar has got a spike. It's starting on another new growth, but we are on spike watch with that one. 
It's doing pretty well on its new mount, although the misting has increased exponentially because the cork is so, so much drier and water repelling than the birch ever was. And then we can go in, have a closer look. I've got my Gold Coast in the corner here, so let's have a look at it. Now, this one was damaged by Ciliano, who found the flight path to the top shelf of my indoor growth space where this one was living before the temperatures were ideal to bring it outside. It is very set back, even though the back pseudobulbs seem to be holding on. That is where the chewing happened and the new growth that it is growing is so, so much more stout, smaller than anything. It's very disappointing. But I've put her here for high humidity Humidity, maximum protection. She's pretty much in perma bright shade, same as the Angrecoids, because I don't want her leaves to burn, but I need her to get lots of light so that hopefully she can recover from the damage that Ciliano did. My bossery to the right is growing pretty well. This leaf early in the season, I believe maybe there was a chill in the air still. I don't know. This, this is not sunburn because of how I positioned the umbrella for the morning sun angle. I don't know, maybe this was just cold damage, but this leaf was one of the ones that wasn't that mature yet, but we have really extended and grown another new leaf here. This one's growing beautifully. The third one is on the way. I missed the back of the hedge for the angrecoids just to up the humidity even further. I don't see any root activity on my bossery. She's always a little bit of a slow poke in comparison to the Crestwood Tomorrow Star, which is growing insanely. Let me scooch around the chair. I was thinking of moving the chair for this video, but ah, that sun is still everywhere on the patio where all the other orchids would have to go. <laughs> Even behind me, the west side is full of sun. It's a wonderful issue to have. But anyway, I think we can pretty much get the gist of what is going on with the Angrecoid because this was the leaf here that was growing when we moved her out early in the season. Meanwhile, she's growing this one as well, pushing a third one. This orchid is drinking like crazy as well. And I have to say, look, I'm not complaining. I absolutely love it. If it's a dish I have to fill, if I have to miss the roots, whatever it takes. I just love how this orchid looks and performs once she is outside. Of course, it freaks me out for when the winter comes because then she has to go inside again. But we have root activity. That is great. Old roots are branching and I've got two stonking new roots coming out of the stem facing the hedge, trying to keep the big roots going in one direction because that is important for when this orchid comes inside. <laughs> it's a nightmare, but out here, it's just wonderful. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is take out the three orchids I want to show you, the tub that I want to clean up. We need to refresh that. So just give me a moment. I'll be right back. So my Rinka Stylus Gigantea is not really that much to write home about, but that is not why she's tucked in the far corner of the Deep South. It is because this orchid, she was my first ever Vanda, and then she bloomed for me. And then we noticed that I don't have enough humidity to keep her happy. Also noticed, <laughs> at least the grass is growing well in semi-hydro. <laughs> and then we also noticed that, well, I couldn't keep up with watering. So eventually she went into a semi-hydro setup. Sorry, while I try to take out this dead leaf, because while we're here, we might as well do this. So she's been losing, well, she's, this would be her fourth leaf so far that she's lost, but I am absolutely not concerned because for the first time, I am seeing that the roots in this semi-hydro pot are looking fabulous from what I can discern. Now, she is a highlight orchid, but my main concern was to make sure that she survives. I'm not interested in any blooming just yet. And since we've done the semi-hydro, I think that was like two and a half years ago, look, <laughs> I know, I know, there's nothing really to write home about here, but for me, this is epic. I like how this growth is looking a little bit more fresh, a little bit more perky, stronger. Her roots will always start, stop, start, stop, and fail on me. Them's the rules here with Rinka Stylus, anything on the patio. The low humidity really does a number on them. But in the pot, oh my my, there is progress. And no, even though I have been weeding some of the moss away, trying to keep it away from the 
stem. My climate is so dry that so far it's not doing the orchid any harm whatsoever. You can tell that the roots that are suspended over the media, it looks awful but I like what I'm seeing in the pot and that is what is resulting in the growth at the top and there's only the one side that I can tell that is doing so so well and while she's in the corner back there I missed her as well every day so high humidity back there sometimes I get 85 90 percent even during the noon hours which is insane but this orchid oh my goodness the fact she is still around I think that maybe one day we will get to see those beautiful blooms again and it would be amazing if my first ever Vanda ever to reach the patio before the trellising was even up if she were to be the last one standing. Here's my Epidendrum Stamfordianum. I didn't finish my train of thought with the Rinca stylus crossed with Cerula when I mentioned why they are tucked away in the corner. Not because they're ugly, but because they need bright light but they don't need the stress of the amount of light that they can actually handle if they were healthy orchids. They need high humidity. They need everything in order to be able to progress, but not in excess. So, Epidendrum Stamfordianum. Goodness me, this came in an order where many orchids were lost. I really don't want to lose this orchid. <laughs> Who wants to lose an orchid? And I have been fighting for her for three years now. You can see that many pseudobulbs have died in the back. And this only happened this season when she started producing new roots and they started to branch everywhere. So all this beautiful white goodness that you see here, that's all new. Yeah, we sacrificed the pseudobulbs for that. So it had me very concerned about her energy levels. Can she cope? But look at this amazing new growth. Oh my goodness, if this works out, it's going to be epic. I am already fertilizing her higher than I normally would, an orchid that is struggling and weak. I am actually putting in about 500 parts per million into the fertilizer as well, but you can tell I do a lot of misting. I also mist the leaves, everything to reduce transpiration from the warm, dry winds. And while I am very mindful of the new growth, now that it is later in the afternoon, I'm going around the media, during the day, it doesn't matter if she gets a good blast from the top. So, fingers crossed. Oh, I was so tempted early in the season to go in, clean up, and then repot her. But I thought, no, I'm going to give her another year because the pot has aeration. Everything is fine in the pot with regards to gas exchange. It's not pot bound, overcrowded. I thought, give her another year. Let her just establish herself in that pot. And then we can figure out when it is the right time to take off the old pseudobulbs. Right now, she looks mangy, but oh, so, so promising. <laughs> and this biology experiment, well, <laughs> if you want to grow Vandas au naturel, let me tell you, it's working. <laughs> The amount of algae and how quickly it develops this time of the year is incredible. I could be doing this every third to fourth day and I don't. I'm not going to waste water like that. But she was in part in the videos about who to rescue, who to try to rescue and who's a goner. This Vanda has come with issues from jump. Also has Rinko Stylus in her parentage. We've discussed the issues with her roots and I thought, well, as a final hurrah, I would take her out of what was a semi-hydro setup and put her into full water culture. So I am encouraged by what I see. <laughs> I know. <laughs> if you can look past everything else and just admire, behold the beautiful root tips and the extension of the roots there. I am encouraged by what I see, of course. You know, I've got all the dead over here. It's all gunky. They have all failed. It's really kind of gross when you squeeze them. This one hasn't and it's wanting to branch. So we'll leave that. Now, I'm going to clean this out because, you know, <laughs> if I'm not going to do anything right, at least I could pretend that I am keeping up with the care of my Vanda Greenhopper. And yes, thankfully there's no legislation in Spain about stagnant water and mosquito larvae or I would be in trouble. I'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> I've done my due diligence. <laughs> Here we go. All right, look, I always top this tub up 
with water, be it with fertilizer, be it with CalMag. It's just a waste of a good product if I just keep emptying it out. And to be honest with you, just because some roots have died, it hasn't hurt the orchid. You see how much water this takes? This is now calcium magnesium at 200 parts per million. And yes, I've re-established the same water line because that root tip was submerged when we took her out before. But if I were to change this out every single, let's say twice a week to keep it clean, it just eats into the budget. I can't do it. Still, we have progress. <laughs> Yeah, she's lost a leaf. She's lost a couple of roots, but she's growing somewhat. All this spotting and stuff, it all remains a mystery to me. She may make it, she may not, but while she's doing what she's doing, it's wonderful to observe. Doing some multitasking, it's their time. I don't want to go at the Kimberly Annum just yet. She may be too warm on the foliage, so I don't want to cool it off. I don't want to shock the leaves with cooler RO water. The water isn't cold, but <clears throat> a distinct difference to the temperature of the foliage. So this would be the last one for her because she's so dense. She's a very tight growing orchid. And for that reason, this is her last time. And now just a little early evening humidity boost, just because, you know, get it more humid and steamy for the night. I sincerely hope that you enjoyed this update. I enjoyed having you on the patio exploring the deep south with me. <laughs> Even finding some natural habitats that a hippo would thoroughly roll around in. <laughs> Thank you so very much for watching. I wish you a wonderful day on that one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care, bye.